Hello! Last time I showed you how to create great buttons in Unity UI. This time I like to make them do something. I'll show you how to play an animation, how to change button properties on click, how to create a simple counter, and finally, how to enable an object using a button. Let's go! So the first button will be very simple. When I click on that yellow character and go to the animation tab, you can see that I have prepared two animations, idle, which is just standing, and jump. To allow us to easily run a jump animation, we need to go into animator and create animation transitions. Right click on idle, select make transition, and drag the whole arrow to jump. Then select the newly created transition, and in settings, deselect has exit time, and change duration to zero. That way, animation won't play by itself and only when we'll tell it to. Now we'll create a trigger that will run our transition. Click this plus icon, select trigger and name it jump. When we go back to the white arrow and click the small plus button under conditions, you can see that Unity automatically selected jump trigger. Great! Now we only need to create a transition that will automatically go back to the idle state. So again, right click on jump, click make transition, drag it to idle, and in settings, leave has exit time, but change it to zero and duration also to zero. Now the last part, running the animation. Click on our button and find on click event. That event, as the name suggests, is run whenever the player clicks on the button. In this field, we can assign any game object and then select which script should be run or which property should be changed. In my case, I'll drag here our character and from dropdown select animator and from the long list select set trigger string. Now we have one more input field where we need to specify the name of our trigger. So in my case, I'll just type jump. Okay, that button should be ready. Press play and then press the first button. Everything looks great. Let's move to the next one. Here we'd like to randomize button color whenever we press the button. For that, we'll need to create a new script. Click on the second button, then add component, and create a new script called random color. Open it. Because we are using Unity UI components, first we need to add at the very top using Unity Engine.UI. Then let's declare our background. Type public image button background. And the last missing puzzle will be a method to change the color. Type public void button clicked and open brackets. Please be sure that our method is public because otherwise we won't be able to run it. Then type button background that color equals and here we'll use a built in method to return random color. Type random dot color hsv. Great! Save your file and go back to Unity. Here we need to collect all the puzzles. Drag button background image into the correct field and assign our method by dragging the random color script into the onclick event and from the dropdown select random color button clicked. Our second button is done. Now simply run the game and click it. You'll see that after each click the color changes. Now to the third one. Here we want to increment this number by one. Just as before, click on the third button, add component and create a new script called add one. Open it. This time also we'll need to type using UTEngine.ui at the very top. 
Then we'll declare a variable with our text. Type public text number text. We'll also need to declare a variable that will store the current count. So type public int number equals zero. Then a method that will be triggered after button click. Public void button clicked. Open brackets. Firstly, we like to increment our value. So type number plus plus, which means to add one to this number. And then we like to change the text. Number text dot text equals number dot to string. Okay, that's done. Let's save our script. Go back to Unity and connect the number text to the correct field and assign button click method in our new script to on click event. Run the game and as you can see, each time I press the button, our number increments. That's wonderful. Finally, the last button. Here, I like to disable the whole right pane on button click. Firstly, I'll show you the very easy way to do it. Simply click on the fourth button and here in the on click event, drag in right frame. Select game object, set active and make sure that checkbox is disabled. If we now play the game, the game object will be disabled. But the problem is we can't re-enable it and also button text and icon does not change. Let's fix it. To make such more advanced changes, we'll of course need to create a new script. Click add component, type enable disable and create a new script. Open it. For the last time today, I'll add using Unity Engine UI and public void button clicked open brackets. We'll need two variables this time. Type public game object right frame. That will be our game object to enable or disable. And then bool variable called is enabled and set it to true. After the player clicks the button, we want to change is enabled to the opposite state. So type is enabled equals exclamation mark is enabled. Then change frame active state. This will be the same thing we did just a second before in Unity. Type right frame dot set active and pass in is enabled. That should be it. Save the script, go back to the Unity, assign the right frame and assign correct action in onclicked trigger. Run the game and it works. Each time we press the button, the right frame is being disabled or enabled. But we have a small problem here. The button text and icon does not change, which might be a bit confusing for the players. So let's fix that. Go back to our script and add four more variables. First one will be button text. Public text button text. Second one, button icon. So type public image button icon. And finally, two variables that will store icon sprites. Type public sprite enable icon and public sprite disable icon. And then let's type some lines of code in our method that will change the text and graphics. We need to create the if statement that will check what button should say. Type if is enabled equals equals true, open brackets, button text, dot text, 
equals disable object button icon that sprite equals disable icon then type else and again open brackets this time we are coding what should happen if the frame is already disabled and we want to enable it type button text that text equals enable object and button icon that sprite equals enable icon okay that should be it save the file go back to unity and assign all fields button text button icon image and both enable icon and disable icon from the project assets now, when we run the game, and if you have done everything exactly the same, you should see changing text and icon depending if the object is visible or hidden. And that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to be notified about any future Unity UI videos, and don't forget to like the video to see more tutorials. See you in the next video.